Start with information. All the information is coming in. It's information from websites, information from books, information from libraries, information from just being in, in the universe uh, is coming through our senses. And there's one thing we can do with it, which is to simply memorize it, right? So a teacher teaches us the information and we memorize it. And when we do that, we end up full of information. Alternatively, we can learn to structure that information in meaningful ways. Structuring information is the same as thinking. Thinking and structuring are synonymous. Thinking, by definition, is the structuring of information. If we get our kids in the classrooms to think and structure information, rather than simply to memorize through our instruction, we will end up with kids that are knowledgeable instead of just information full. This is where we went wrong. We, we took the road to the right, and uh, we needed to take the road to the left. One of the things that's interesting about this very simple sort of path in the woods, as Robert Frost would say, is that the um, inside of this very simple sort of fork in the road is actually a simple equation made up of knowledge and thinking and information. We can say that knowledge is equal to information times thinking. And that makes sense. Even if you don't like math, that makes sense. In, knowledge is equal to information times thinking. When we take information and we structure it in the meaningful ways, we get knowledge. So K is equal to I times T. That's the universal equation for education itself. Now let's talk a little bit about what is I. Information, again, is content. It's our standards. It's our entire curriculum. All the books that we've ever seen or ever will see, colors, sounds, tastes, all of that is simply data or information that comes through our senses. Then we have to structure it in some way. That's what K equals IT says, that we take this information in, we organize it using thinking structuring processes, and as a result, based on the way we structure it, we have that information there when we want to make that information actionable into knowledge. That's what information is. Now, knowledge is that actionable thing. Now, what's happened is that we've dropped the T from the equation. And what that means is that we've actually made a situation in our educational system where knowledge is equal to information, because we've just dropped the T, the thinking, out of the equation. That is a very simple explanation for what has been happening for decades in our schools. We've actually mistaken that knowledge and information are the same thing. So what we need to do is get the thinking back in the equation. It cannot end up being K equals I. It has to be K equals I times T. Knowledge is equal to information times thinking. This is a, a universal theory of education, a universal theory that guides everything that we do in education. Essentially what we do with that equation that we had, remember K equals IT, is now we've been able to define what T is. And we define T by putting these little, these little brackets and D and S and R and P. And D and S and R and P are the four universal ways that we structure information. So again, the theory, the theory is very simple. It's simply saying that information is full of, you know, everything under the sun that's coming at us through our senses. And then we structure it using four universal patterns or structures, and then we turn that information into knowledge. So let's look at what D and S and R and P are. Distinctions, we make distinctions between things. In other words, we distinguish between one thing and another, between one idea and another, between one object and another. We do that all the time. We're doing that constantly, right? You, you can't even listen to me speak without making thousands of distinctions. And when you look around a room, you're making thousands of distinctions, chair, person, person. All of those things are distinctions between objects or ideas, etc. Now, systems is that once we distinguish things, we put them together into systems of part whole, right? So, you know, a chair is made up of the arm and the back and the blah, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. So we, we take things and we organize them into part whole groupings. We also relate those things. We take one thing and another thing and we relate them together. And oftentimes when we relate them, they turn into little systems themselves. And of course, we're doing all of this, distinguishing between things, relating things, grouping things uh, through part-whole combinations in systems. We do all of that from 
various perspectives, right? So we're always taking a perspective at any given point in time. Um, and so D and S and RNP are universal to this process. I want to talk real quick about what I mean by universal. What I mean by